So we're in our third part of the fight in gospel ministry. And we talked about being strong and we're in that section about being strong in the Lord. Looking at Ephesians 6.10 where it talks about be strong in the Lord. <coughs> Before we start let's pray again. Oh God, I thank you that you are a God of goodness and love. I thank you for what you're doing in the person's life and I pray the person who hears this word will be blessed of you. I pray your Holy Spirit would anoint them and equip them and refresh them. And Father, I pray that you'd be with us now in Jesus' name. Amen. So the next text I'd like us to look at is Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 It says, Have you not known, have you not uh, heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary his understanding is unsearchable he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases strength even the youth shall fail and be weary and the young men shall utterly fail fall but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint he said Jay you know between me and you Jay as a pastor I'm done I've got nothing left mate as a pastor I've got no energy, I've got no strength, I've got no zeal. I'm just done Jay. I, I just can't do this anymore. Maybe in your marriage, maybe in your studies at school or college, you might feel the same. You might say, Jay, I've got to the end now and I have not got any strength at all left in me. Good. You say good, yeah, good. You're in the good. You're in a good place. You say, but Jay, you don't understand. I, I've, I've, I've come to the cliff. It's like a cliff, Jay. I've come in my pastoral ministry as a preacher and, and pastor. I, I've come to that cliff where I, I can't do it no more, and I am ready for falling off. And you're saying good. Or I, I, in my marriage, I can't do this anymore. And you're saying good. And you're saying, in my studies at school, I, I can't do this anymore. And you're saying, good. Yeah. So what's the answer? Two things. One is wait. And two is hope. The first thing you need to do is wait. Whenever you get to that point where you say, I, I can't do this no more whether it be in your marriage, whether it be in your ministry, whether it be in your college work, when you get to that point where you say, I can't do this no more, I can't do it, I am completely finished. When you get to that point, a golden rule, remember this golden rule, wait upon God. When you get to that point, you've got to wait on God. And in that waiting there's hope. Look at the passage there. Look at that passage. You need to study this passage. Read it and, and, and let it imbibe you. It says, Isaiah 40, verse 27. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over my God. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator, the ends of the earth, Neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. God's power, God's might, God's, God's resources are, are awesome, everlasting. They're always there. So you might be empty. You might have come to your end. But God is there. You say, Jay, I don't feel God's there. I've come to the end and I can't do it anymore in my ministry and I don't feel God's there. That's okay. I know that. I know you don't feel God's there. But I'm just telling you in Scripture that God is there. And God has all the resources and all the power. He really, really has. 
He really, really has. Then he says, He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. And you have come to your end in yourself. But he gives strength to the weak. You come to God and you say, God, I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I can't do this pastoral ministry no more. I'm finished, God. I'm out of here. At that point, as you come to God and say that, I need you, God, he will come. And it says, he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. And he'll come and he'll fill you and he'll and Jesus will, will, will come and he's Jesus is ever so sweet to his pastors. He's ever so sweet to the servants of God. Oh he'll chastise you, Pastor. He'll chastise you, preacher. Well, Jesus is so sweet to his preachers. He's so sweet to his ministers. And you you he'll come to you. He'll come to you and he and he'll and he'll and he'll speak peace and he'll and he'll refresh you and he'll renew you. And those in marriages who are struggling in your marriage and you can't do it. God knows and he'll come and he'll help you. He'll come. You've got to come and wait upon God. You've got to wait upon God. That's what you've got to do for your marriage. If your marriage is in conflict and where you're not getting on and you're tired and, 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 and you're, you're beaten down, you've got to wait upon God. Don't react to every situation in that marriage. Don't react to every problem in that marriage. It's time to take a step back and wait on God. And he will renew your strength. And if you can get your partner to spend time with God and wait on God with you, God will renew your marriage through that waiting on him. Next time you and your wife have a row, say this to your wife. Look, this is getting us nowhere. Let's open our Bibles. Let's just be quiet. Let's wait on God. And He'll speak and He'll renew. That's the only way you're going to get peace in your marriage. Is that you both wait upon God. You both shut your mouths. You both stop arguing with each other. You both stop judging each other and distrusting each other. And you both start to listen to God. Because if you don't listen to God, you'll drive each other insane. So start listening to Him. Be quiet and wait on God. Because you can't do gospel ministry. And you can't preach the word of God. And you can't do mission if your own marriages are at loggerheads. Okay? So the answer is to wait upon God. Oh, that you would wait. Wife, wait on God. He said, but he, he, he doesn't care. He doesn't, he, he, he doesn't understand. Wait on God. You're killing your husband because you're judging him. And husband, you're saying, but she needs to understand and she needs to do this and she needs to do that. You're killing your wife because you think you know best. Wife, husband, wait on God, listen to God, hear from God, ask God to speak into your marriage and shut up and stop tearing each other apart and listen to God. Hear from God. But, but, shut up. But my husband, shut up. But my wife keeps, shut up. You're both destroying each other. Because you're not listening to God. The moment you start listening to God, He will put His finger upon the problem and you'll say, Yeah, it's not my wife, it's me. I'm the problem. I've got issues. Or the wife will say, Well, actually, it's not the husband, it's me. And if you're focused on Christ, if you're focused on Christ, the marriage will begin to come together and be strong.
So if you're losing hope in your marriage, God has the resources and God will bring renewal in your marriage as you wait upon Him. If you're feeling down, um, it's impossible in your gospel ministry. Wait upon the Lord. Oh, that's what you've got to do is wait upon Him. Don't try to do too more mission. Don't try to do more evangelism or more pastoral ministry. Cut back. Say to your church, I need a day. I need two days away. And get away. Three days away or a week. And just get along with God. And wait on Him. And He will renew you. Okay? And as a student, you know, you're working as a student. You're working... Uh, at university or college or whatever and you're, and, and you're, 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 or, or you're at work and, and you can't do your work whenever you get to that point where you can't go on God is there He's there and He, and he really does meet your need and He'll fill you He'll fill you but you've got to just wait and not panic and realize in that darkness God will come to you I know I've been there I've been there I've come to God I testify right now I've come to God and I've got down on my knees and I've said God I can't do it no more and I'm telling you I had no strength to go on not one bit in ministry not one bit I had no strength and then Jesus touched me with his love. Jesus filled me with his love. So I'm telling you from experience. I'm telling you as a person who's gone to the depths of darkness. Where I have come and I've said I can't do it no more. I'm done God. And I'm telling you my Lord Jesus Christ was sweet and tender. And he came to me and he put a new song in my heart. Now if you can do it for me, you can do it for you. I don't care how dark it is today in your studies at college. I don't care how dark it is in your marriage. I don't care how dark it is in your ministry. If you come and get on your knees and say, God, I can't do it no more. I need you. Help me. And wait upon him. Just wait. Just wait. Say, I can't do it. I can't do it no more. Wait. And the sweetness of Christ will come and fill your pastoral ministry, will fill your marriage, will fill you as a student, will fill you. And you'll feel the sweetness of Christ again and his presence again. You will. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now you know that is for you. You know that was for you. Come on. You know it was for you. It was for you. God was in that just there. Isaiah 41.10 Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. There's God speaking penetrating your darkness right now penetrating your darkness right now fear not for I am with you be not dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you yes I will help you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand fear not fear not says God fear not I'm just checking the time God's telling you to fear not He's there with you right now. We're going to carry on this series. It's going to be a long series. But I hope you're getting blessed. Take care now.